In this video I want to tell something about how to make shortwave oscillators, especially with bipolar transistors. Uh, a few hours ago I have published this circuit on YouTube, slurk tuning, and I told that when you don't want to use it as a slurk tuned circuit, you can use here for instance a variable capacitor, a tuning capacitor, and that's that's also a very good idea to tune in to certain frequencies, and these frequencies depend, of course, on the number of windings and the value of that tuning capacitor. Study the read radio theory for more information, etc. This video will perhaps be quite long, but anyway, perhaps it's interesting for everyone that uh, wants to do these experiments, shortwave experiments. And I always focus on simple circuits and uh, electronic components that are very easy to buy, for instance the BC547. And then we are directly on an important uh, point here. The BC547 works as a high frequency transistor up to say 8 MHz or 9 MHz. When you use for instance in this transistor, sorry, in this circuit a typical high frequency transistor, say a BF type, here, here you see some of them, the BF199, you can perhaps get better results. So that's the first thing to tell. The BC547 is a very very good transistor Amplification factor is approximately 300. It's a so called MESA transistor and it works in this application. But for more and perhaps better results, use a typical high frequency transistor. So, what's more to tell about this circuit that is, by the way, here? And it gener generates this wave on 2.9 megahertz. What's more to tell? Um, sometimes the amplification of a transistor is too high. That means that you get kind of distorted, a distorted output. Uh, it's not a sine wave but a kind of, uh, say, sawtooth wave, like this. Or you find, for instance, such a, such a wave with all kinds of strange effects, especially here on that slope. In that case, a very good idea is to bridge the coil here by two silicon transistors, Bi uh, not bipolar, but one in one direction and one in the other direction. You can see that here. And the property of these uh, diodes is, Perhaps I said transistors, but anyway, I mean diodes, diodes, two silicon diodes, anti parallel. The property of these diodes is that uh, they limit the voltage that can be generated over that coil to, say, maximum 0.7 volts, both on the positive side and on the negative side. So it acts as a kind of limiter, and that's also the reason why we see here this beautiful sine wave. When I remove this diode, you will surely see such a wave, or even such a wave. Very strange wave. 
uh, sawtooth like. Um, and furthermore, when you make such a circuit in a first experimental setup, you can do everything you like, uh, especially regarding long or not long wiring. I've showed that in an earlier video. Uh, I've used here, for instance, crocodile clips, and here crocodile clips from, say, 30 centimeters each. But that's a good way to do these experiments, and that all regards, say, uh, 100 kilohertz up to, say, 10 megahertz. It's no problem. I've done that many times. Here, for instance, important to tell, we have the coupling capacitor. When that coupling capacitor is too high, has a too high value, too much signal is transported into the base where the transistor amplifies it all. So that can lead to distortion. When you have some kind of distortion, limit the value of this capacitor. Here we have the so-called capacitive voltage divider and these two capacitors, say 4 and 7 and 1.5 nanofarad, so 4700 picofarad and 1500 picofarad. We have of course here set two capacitors uh, in series. So the, the real value that the transistor sees from the base to the emitter is lower than 4700 picofarads anyway. But this is a capacitive voltage divider and they are also responsible for a pure waveform. When you make uh, this capacitive voltage divider not in a proper way, you have a distorted waveform. That's the reason why I first soldered here that 4N7 capacitor, but later uh, uh, I found that it was good to limit the value of that 4N7 capacitor and set it in series with a 1N5 capacitor. So it's now, say, approximately lower than uh, 1500 picofarad. And also this capacitor can do a very great job when it comes to uh, a pure sine wave. For instance, do experiments between uh, 400 picofarad and 2.2 nanofarad, so 2200 picofarad. I found <coughs> also here we set, by the way, the bias of the oscillator, here. This is very, very important. When you copy circuits from the internet, you will never find uh, this potentiometer. But it's very important. Uh, here you can set the precise biasing of the oscillator. And even with this 330 ohm resistor, I find I found that I could bias the transistor much better. So quite strange, but you need here, for instance, in this case, a 330 ohms resistor. I first use a 1K resistor here in the collector lead. Of course, here and here, this sets the amplification. The value of the collector uh, resistor compared to the emitter resistor, and with that uh, value of that capacitor, that sets the typical high frequency of that uh, properties, the typical high frequency properties of that first transistor. And uh, I soldered first 1K sorry, first one 2K2 and then 1K parallel, and I found that it worked much better. This is the 100 picofarad capacitor that it will be sent into the mixer of the radio. Could be that the mixer needs a smaller capacitor, could be say 20 picofarad, or even 
220 picofarad. That depends, of course, on the frequency where that VFO works. So, here that VFO again. And here you see the tiny capacitor of 27 picofarad. I built the whole circuit first experimentally. I've showed that in a recent video on YouTube. And I found that when all was made properly, when all was more or less in this definite stage, piece of wood, brass nails, etc., etc., the waveform was not very, not pure enough, but only on frequencies higher than the frequencies to which I made the circuit. So this proved to be a very simple solution. This is always, by the way, a simple solution to get a better waveform, though the amplitude will drop. So I've used now 27 picofarad. I think it acts the same, but I'm not sure as the Miller circuit, kind of frequency multiplying anyway, etc. But 10 picofarad works, will work good, 27 picofarad, perhaps you have to go somewhat higher. So, that was more or less all to tell about the coil. I've showed in the preceding video different coils made with different types of wire. This is for instance a usable wire. It's out of telephones in the Netherlands, telephone wiring, and it has very very good high frequency properties. I don't know the exact name of the plastic, but anyway. This is also usable. usable. It's used for, uh, say, 230 volts mains wiring in the Netherlands. It has different colors, but the inner side here is, say, 2 millimeters or perhaps 3 millimeters. And that isolation plastic is also good. So when you want to go to high, higher frequencies, you can wind a um, VFO coil with this type of wiring. Furthermore, ferrite rods. Some ferrite rods are specially made for medium waves. This one, for instance, a medium wave is, say, 600 kilohertz up to 1.8 megahertz. And I bought this on a flea market, these rods, 10 of them. And they proved to be also good to uh, be used on short wave and medium wave. The diameter is small, smaller here. And this one is bigger. But when you do experiments on short wave or medium wave, <coughs> go to, for instance, radio markets, buy some of them and test them. This is, by the way, a good example of a, of a coil that always works. Here you have, say, 50 windings and here a thin wire. Also, say, 20 windings or so. And when you shortcut a part of that coil here, you only have this part of the coil. And that means that, of course, the VFO goes to higher frequencies when you shortcut this part. And I made it on a cardboard roll. Uh, that cardboard roll has a very low loss, electromagnetic loss. That's important when you work on shortwave uh, cardboard. Cardboard has no loss at all. So when you stick in a ferrite rod into such a cardboard tube, you can be sure that you can gain the maximum Q, the maximum quality factor of such a coil. I've used here uh, PVC 
polyvinyl chloride as the uh, say the, the core on which that coil was mounted and it also has good qualities and by purpose I've made that I've used it here because the ferrite rod must move in it must have some uh, say space to be moved in and out anyway um, that are more or less the most important important things to tell of course here always a capacitor of say 100 microfarad or 220 microfarad to decouple the oscillator unit that's very important it adds a lot to the stability and for a VFO the uh, the voltage, the supply voltage also must be stabilized so use for instance a 7812 chip that can do the job or a uh, series regulator with one transistor or two transistors anyway so that's very important stabilized voltage of course because such a VFO has to stay on a on the frequency very precise to which you tune it when you change this resistor to a higher value say 220 ohms or 470 ohms sometimes it can work better the relation between these two transistors sorry uh, resistors sets the properties of amplification in combination with this capacitor and this is by the way frequency dependent so on higher frequencies this capacitor has to be somewhat somewhat uh, smaller on lower frequencies it can be somewhat higher anyway that was more or less all to tell you can use normal switches I used here a crocodile clip and here you see when I switch in that crocodile clip we are going from 9.3 megahertz to say uh, 5.0 and when I stick in the the rod the ferrite rod we are on 2.9 Anyway, uh, every uh, shortwave oscillator has certain properties, has a certain limited bandwidth. And when you want to make uh, a radio oscillator that works better, and then I mean to a higher frequency, use a field effect transistor. They, uh, these uh, the video, such a video about that field effect transistor is on my YouTube channel somewhere. 